Young Thug and Rich Homie Kwan. Two rappers who had all the ingredients for mainstream success in the music industry. Whether we're talking Billboard hits, platinum selling records, or sold out concert performances. In 2015, their duo Rich Gang was at the pinnacle of success, dropping one of the decade's biggest hits. However, just a year after experiencing the most explosive growth in their careers, their once bright future took a sour turn. Despite the massive admiration from fans and critics alike, their relationship fell apart, leaving many to wonder what happened to Rich Gang. Hi. I'm Luesta. I make weekly video documentaries of things I'm into. And today, I want to answer two simple questions. What led to Rich Gang's fallout? And what lessons can we learn from their relationship to improve our chances of success in the future? This here, it's a true story. So just listen. The vibe that these guys' songs gave me in 2014, I will never feel in any other song. Best hip hop duo. By far one of the coldest duos. I want them back. Good music, good times, good vibes. These are the type of comments you can find when searching up old songs and documentaries of Rich Gang. Their relationship started out with love and gave fans the feeling as if they had an unbreakable brotherly bond but only one year after they dropped their explosive breakout hit, videos started surfacing that showcased the rappers engaging in a heated back and forth. If I'm not just gonna say we buddy buddy, who we not? So what really happened between them? It all started in the summer of 2014. At the time, Young Thug was nowhere near the big superstar rapper that he's known for today. He was just an up and coming rapper out of Atlanta known for his unique and kinda odd vocal delivery, which he showcased on his songs such as Danny Glover and Stoner. Fans gravitated towards his sound as it was something fresh and unique that absolutely nobody was familiar with at the time. I remember that this was the first song I heard from Young Thug and how marvelous I was to hear something so innovative in rap. Summer 2014, every high school party played this. That was my best summer, never forget it. It only makes sense to know that he was previously mentored by another ATL native and legend in his own right, Gucci Mane, who helped propel his career early on and prepped him up for the success he was soon about to see. And when he came, I told him, I said, listen, I'm gonna sign you. I said, I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna give you a shot. I said, I don't care if you can rap or not. I know you can hustle. So we're gonna just hustle the music. I'm gonna work with you. However, when Gucci Mane was sentenced to jail in September of 2013, Young Thug was left with no choice but to have to navigate the difficulties of trying to become a mainstream artist on his own. That's when Young Thug started to look for a new label that could help take his career to the next level. Luckily, another hip hop legend and visionary, Birdman, stepped into the picture and came to the rescue. For those who don't know, Birdman is the CEO of Cash Money Records, which played a major role in bringing up some of the biggest rappers of all time, including Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, and even your boy Drizzy Drake. But in the summer of 2014, most of the label's biggest artists had moved on to pursue other opportunities, and Birdman was attempting to create another huge star. He started off by forming a group named Rich Gang, which consisted of various artists from his record label. However, all he had was a handful of artists who honestly nobody cared about. So when Birdman learned that Young Thug was no longer under Gucci Mane's wing, he saw the opportunity and reached out to Thug hoping to sign him to his record label. The two immediately hit it off and began working on a project they were hoping to release that same year. In Birdman's words, I wouldn't do nothing but bless him in every way possible. I'm gonna do everything within my power to make him as big as he possibly can. This was a win-win situation because Young Thug would also gain a huge advantage working with Birdman. Being that he had a ton of industry connections and was able to get damn near any artist and producer to work with Thugga. In the process, they came up with a legendary track titled Lifestyle, which was produced by London on the track. And Thug recorded a verse that would go down in the hip hop history books forever. After Birdman heard the record, he knew that it could be a hit, but it needed one more thing, a feature from another artist. And Birdman had one specific artist in mind. Y'all uh, put together a lifestyle. Were you were you guys all in the studio together? Nope. Birdman played it for me. It was my uh, first time being in uh, that, that was like uh, my first time 
kicking over. Bird. He played. He came to one of my shows in Miami. You know, after the show, we left, and I went to the studio with Bird. You know, Lifestyle was the first song he played for me. And I told him that shit. Pull, pull my verse up HL. I did my verse in like 20 minutes. As Birdman was plotting on how he was going to take Thug to the next level, he stumbled upon Rich Homie Quan after one of his performances in Miami. At the time, Rich Homie was beginning to really kick off his career with the single Differences in 2012, before then proceeding to feature on a few big tracks from Gucci Mane's Trap House 3 album. Then his career absolutely skyrocketed when he released the absolute banger hit, Type of Way, in 2013. But this song was nothing compared to what was about to happen. In the process of creating the song Lifestyle, Birdman decided to ask Rich Homie Quan to do a feature, and Quan recorded the verse in an astonishing 20 minutes. Unbeknownst to them at the time, these 20 minutes were about to turn into the greatest thing to ever happen to him and also Young Thug. While both artists were already successful in their own right, it wasn't until they collaborated on the song Lifestyle that everything changed. And so, would you say that during that time period, you and Thug were really like close friends, or was it just like a convenient musical relationship? And Birdman was really the thing that was keeping y'all together. No, 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 that was my dog. That was my dog. Right. And so, when did that fall apart? And was it abrupt or sudden that you guys just stopped having anything to do with each other, or how did that unfold? Um. Later in the video, we're going to discuss the specifics of why this song created such a massive wave of momentum for them. But for now, just know that this song was huge. Till this day, the song has amassed over 600 million views on YouTube alone. It also gave them a certified platinum record in the US and peaked at number 16 on the Billboard charts, respectively. Which is an amazing feat considering that both rappers have still yet to surpass this milestone. Shortly after the song exploded, the two rappers officially formed the group Rich Gang, under Birdman's guidance. But this time, it wasn't just a random group of artists from Cash Money Records. Instead, it became known for the superstar duo of Thug and Quan. The two went on to make an entire project together titled Rich Gang The Tour Part 1, which did extremely well. After the song, and that's when he came with like, man, y'all got to do a mixtape. We're going to do a rich game. Do like the, the new rich game. The tour was an insane 20-song mixtape that was literally a no-skipper. It further showcased just how amazing the chemistry was between Thug and Quan, and made artists realize how collaboration projects could bring out the best in both artists. And it's clear that many fans felt the same way, with some fans referring to the project as the greatest mixtape of all time, and that every track was simply a banger. Sites like Complex had the album as one of the greatest records of the year for 2014, and even Pitchfork, home to some of the harshest hip hop reviews, gave the album a whopping 8 out of 10 rating. So it's clear that there was something different about this album and the Rich Gang duo as a whole. But unfortunately, after the tour mixtape, things became complicated for Rich Gang. Just as they began to do concert performances, create documentaries, and work on new music for their fans over the course of the next year, something tragic happened. And in December of 2015, everything seemingly came crashing down. It was just great collaborative music. Like we were never, I was never just rich game. It's just, we were just all solo artists, you know, working on a project together. You know what I mean? I never signed any paperwork. You feel me? I, I came in Rich Homie Quan, that's the way I wanted to live, man. Despite how much good music we did, all that, you know what I mean? I still want to just always do my own thing. Although the single Lifestyle brought tremendous momentum for both rappers, the song's success was largely attributed to Young Thug's catchy chorus and impactful verses. He became the standout with fans quoting his motivational lyrics. The song was basically Young Thug's song with a Rich Homie Quan feature. Despite this, Rich Homie still added a unique touch that no other rapper could replicate. Their chemistry and bond were undeniable, but more importantly, it was Thug's hilarious hook that had the internet memeing the song into oblivion, which really helped the song blow up out of proportion. And it was here where he basically created the term mumble rap, as Thugga can be heard rapping in a way that no one was really familiar with at the time, specifically for this part. 
with comments on the song ranging from saying things such as, I can't wait for the English version to come out, to the fact that they had to pause the song to burst out laughing. It's clear that Thugger's addition to the track is really what created its virality. I myself remember being a senior in high school when the song dropped, and it was literally the number one thing that me and my friends would talk about for a long time. I specifically remember being in class with my friend Alan, who would walk in every single day reciting the chorus of the song on the funniest part. We played it so many times that eventually it grew onto us and we became huge fans of Thug, eager to listen to the rest of his discography in hopes that we find more songs like it. It was basically everyone's first introduction to Young Thug and Rich Homie Kwan, but no one really cared too much about about Rich Homie Kwan's part. It was just kind of there. Whether you liked the song or hated it, there was one thing for sure. It was Young Thug who got people talking. And after the song blew up, Thug would also become a huge subject of more and more controversy at the time. Being that he was such an enigma when comparing him to the average hip hop artist. He wasn't seen trying to enact the whole big tough guy slash gangster persona like most rappers did at the time. Instead, opting to wearing things like this, and even going as far as to refer to Rich Homie Kwan as his hubby. Young Thug calls you hubby. Uh, on Instagram. Explain what that what, what that means, man. It's just a figure of speech, man. Take it how you want to like. I know I ain't gay. Young Thug also deviated from the typical rapper sound at the time. Whereas rappers like Nipsey Hussle, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, ASAP Rocky, and many more were making ways for their hard-hitting lyrics where they spilled their soul on a track, Young Thug's sound was more playful, fun, and willing to step out of the box to create something unique and unheard of. Thug's style would go on to evolve over the years, and it's become a known fact that he's become the main reason that many rappers of this generation sound the way they do today. And it all started with the song Lifestyle. So you can imagine what this was doing to Rich Homie Kwan's mind state around this time. On one hand, he was constantly getting bombarded with questions about Young Thug, whether it was about the song Lifestyle or simply being accused of being gay. The shit started falling apart. When, I feel like when we start going on, we start getting booked for shows and shit. In September of 2014, just a few days after the song was released and began gaining popularity, rumors began circulating that the two had announced a tour set to start on November 1st. However, the concert tour their mixtape was named for never materialized. The mixtape became an artifact of an incomplete promo cycle and an appetizer for an entree that never arrived. And ultimately, neither Thug or Quan released any albums on the Cash Money Records label. As solo artists, or as a group. They also announced a follow-up to the Rich Gang tour mixtape that would eventually get leaked on the internet and would never end up officially dropping. Soon afterwards, rumors began spreading that the two had a fallout and the Rich Gang crew was no longer a thing. The two began to be seen less and less hanging out with each other and rather focusing intensely on their own solo careers. This may have to do with the fact that on February 26th, 2015, Rich Homie Kwan did an interview with Dirty Daily, claiming that he wanted to step back from Rich Gang because people wanted to hear more music from him specifically. I got too much music. I'm talking about good music that these people want to hear, man. But I have been focusing more on myself. I've stepped away from the Rich Gang with living just to get back to Corn. These right. people want Corn back, man. And only a year later, Young Thug would confirm this in an interview on Sway in the Morning, where he claimed that this was the moment he wanted to distance himself further from Rich Homie. The fact that he said he wanted to, to chill for a minute and mm -hmm. do his own music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did an interview and he was like, uh, I want to I wanna relax from Rich Gang and, and by yourself, you know. I think the people want to hear me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow. So we just stopped working like that. However, it was clear there was so much more to the story that they weren't telling us. As shortly after these statements were made, a video began surfacing of Rich Homie Kwan's performance in 2015, just a year later, where he can be seen calling Young Thug the F word after some guy tried groping him on stage. This showed Kwan clearly had a problem with Thug's seemingly gay persona. Many fans claimed this was truly what ended Rich Homie Kwan's career, claiming that it was never the same after him and Thug fell out. And to no one's surprise, this insult did not go over well with Young Thug, who would later fire back in a tweet saying, Homie, your low career almost over. But that's not all. In his 2015 rodeo tour with Travis Scott, Thugger let the entire world know how he felt. You speaking of horses? What? You saw the fucking video, man. 
As the dust settled over the years and both rappers went their own ways, it seemed like both rappers have since moved on. While Thugger went on to redeem immense success in the music industry, spawning breakout albums such as The Barter Six, Jeffrey, and So Much Fun, Rich Homie Kwan had a difficult time remaining relevant and redeeming the same mainstream appeal as he did when he was partnered up with Rich Gang. In reality, Rich Homie Kwan should have stayed with Rich Gang longer because Thug blew up once he left. When asked about what happened in an interview with Big Boy TV from 2019, Thugga seemed to have forgiven Rich Homie over the years. No, we don't have no problem. I like I don't think we we gonna be, I don't think we can be like how we used to be. Right. I'm, I forgive, I always forgive. I don't ever hold grudges on nobody. I forgive everybody. In a 2023 interview with No Jumper, Quan revealed the real reasons behind the breakdown. And Ego played a big role in it. Uh, certain people, uh, include myself, certain people felt like they should go last, or certain people wanted more money, and you know, one of those, you know, I ain't gonna say too much, but right. they started falling apart around it. Fast forward a year later to 2017, and it seemed like their animosity towards each other was completely gone. Despite rumors of a beef, Quan admits that their tour part one mixtape was a classic, and that he tries to look back on everything positively because a negative light will bring out negative energy in him. I'm at a point in my life where I'm not trying to do that. So with Rich Gang, it's a milestone. We recorded great music, and there's never nothing to be disappointed about. Every last one of us who was in that situation came away better, stronger, and smarter. It was good while it lasted. All that to say, the relationship between the two former comrades isn't great, and the chances of future collaborations are next to none. And boom, just like that, an era was over. All because of a few poorly timed and insensitive comments. But truthfully, it was more than just one comment. It was a combination of things. In the end, jealousy, large egos, and hurt feelings each played a major role in their breakup. It's your boy Luesta, and if you like this video, then you'll definitely enjoy the one on the screen. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.